Hi, I forgot to bring my tripod, so you guys have to be in the air until I put you down in this meeting room. Hello, everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about this my laptop but why my laptop basically my laptop is my everything it's basically the, the number one thing that matters in my work if it is not there i cannot work so it is pretty important my laptop believe it or not is sometimes my motivation to do my work it is my magic gadget to run my business and it is my fuel for productivity in one word it is a pretty big deal in my life and when it comes to choosing a laptop it all comes down to one thing and that is performance how does the laptop perform i care about performance up to 80 percent and i care about how it looks and how it feels you know in terms of weight the quality the materials how it feels in your hands and that is the 20 percent i care about because obviously i'm a designer i have to so I, there's no other way but today in this video i've got an acer swift series laptop and this is the acer swift series 16 powered by the Ryzen 7 8000 series processor but in this video I'm going to share my honest opinion on the things that I like and the things that I don't like about this laptop there are quite a few things that I still don't like about this laptop but there are a lot of things that I like about it this laptop it's it's like a medium range laptop it's not like that the highest end of the laptop market it is not also the lower end of the, the market so it's like in between that we have to you know know what to expect from this laptop when reviewing it and not expecting this to be you know a super high-end laptop and one thing i want to mention about the ryzen processes and why they are important i'm a designer and i'm a business owner in the creative industry so i do a lot of tasks from content creation 3d modeling architecture cat drawing video editing and so many different things that my laptop needs to handle uh, all of that in one. So Ryzen processors are basically built for that. AMD says that they're building the Ryzen processors for me and you, people in the creative industry that have a lot of different tasks to do. And the Ryzen processors are something that they can really benefit from. But let's see if that is actually true, because this is my first experience with a Ryzen processor. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm really excited to talk about this laptop is the concept of the APU, which is the CPU and the GPU integration. So the Ryzen 7 processor is integrated with the AMD Radeon graphics. This has made a few advantages and also I think a few disadvantages uh, in terms of you know overall performance as well as look and feel. Uh, but generally, if you haven't worked with an APU, I haven't as well. This is my first time using an APU, which was a very interesting experience. I'm gonna go through what I liked and disliked about this um, integration. So first one being is the power usage. With the APUs, the laptops that have the APU, the power usage is much less because of the integration. If they were to use the power separately as a CPU and a GPU, that would make them to use more power. So but the gaming laptops, for example, the graphics card uses a lot of power. It drains the battery a lot. So with the APUs, on the other hand, we don't have that problem. I tested this one on generative AI renderings, some 3D modelings, uh, architecture renderings, tasks that are usually intense with the graphics, and it, it really performed really well. So I was really pleased to see that the, the battery was really sustainable and really efficient. The second advantage with these laptops with the APU, especially this one with the Ryzen and AMD Radeon graphics, is the price tag and the cost. There are lots of people who are looking for laptops that can handle good amount of like GPU usage and want to do renderings and graphic things like that. It comes with a lower price tag. So it's a pretty important thing to bear in mind. These are limited usually in terms of capacity and what they can do, but they offer very, very good level of GPU capability for people who are looking to do graphic stuff. The last thing about the APUs uh, is that because it occupies less space 
in the laptop uh, physically. It makes the laptop much less heavyweight. So this laptop is only 1.23 kilograms, which makes it very, very easy to carry around. It's one of my favorite points about this laptop that is very, very lightweight. And it's also very thin as well. So if you have a look at the side, it's not bulky at all. It's quite slim. If you look at the sides, it's kind of nice. So. I really, really like carrying this around. It helps my back. Now let's talk about the Ryzen AI enhancements in the Ryzen processor. There are uh, new enhancements in the AI processor. So we wanna go through the points that actually affect their laptop's performance and talk about this. So the first one is that the Ryzen 7 8000 series offloads AI tasks from the CPU, providing more efficient and faster AI processing. This helps in the use cases like image and video processing, natural language processing, and machine learning tasks. So basically it's saying that it offloads a lot of AI tasks from the CPU uh, in order for the generative AI workflows to run more smoothly on this laptop. And the second point is that it says the AI engine is designed to deliver up to 60% improved AI performance compared to previous generations, making it capable of handling more complex AI workflows efficiently according to Acer. Basically saying that it is an improved version of the AI performance compared to the others uh, in this series of Ryzen, um, which is interesting. Plus these enhancements, there are also four features specifically with AI in this laptop that you can use directly. These include things like auto framing. So when you're using the, the webcam, the webcam kind of detects um, where you are and kind of frames you uh, appropriately. It has gaze correction. Gaze correction is something that basically fixes your eye contact when you're not looking at the camera. From my understanding, at least like that, that's how it sounds. Background blur is blurring your background, similar to how you do it on Zoom or like your conferencing apps, but this time the AI lets your blur to be more effective and more uh, precise. And also noise reduction. So when you're talking in a conference or something, it can detect the noise around you and it can lower it down. Now let's talk about my actual experience with this laptop. But generally, before I dive into my own experience, I wanna tell you a bit more about the specs of um, the laptop. The laptop has 32 gigabytes of memory, which makes it ideal um, for the type of tasks I really need to do on my laptop. And it has the Ryzen 7 8840U processor, uh, AMD Radeon graphics, one terabyte of storage space, as well as a beautiful uh, 16.3 3.2 K OLED screen with ultra high contrast and deep blacks. Okay, how did this laptop perform on my architecture tasks? I haven't done any 3D modeling and rendering recently, but I tested it on this laptop to see how it does. So I kind of pulled some of my files from before and started to kind of float around the space in the 3D model, kind of see how this performs and handles the graphics. This file, for example, is a huge file. It's around 1.5 gigabytes and contains lots of textures applied to different surfaces and many renderings assets uh, present in the scene. The model itself loads pretty fast and I can pan around and check out different views pretty easily without any problem. When it comes to loading the Enscape model, however, the laptop struggles to load it quite quickly. It takes a while to load the Enscape window as there are loads of Enscape assets in the model. But when the model is loaded, then you don't have so much problem with like going around and uh, looking at the model and walking around your spaces. The issue, however, happens with my very large files like this one. But when I open another file, which is around 800 megabytes, which is still quite a lot, but significantly lower than the other one. It loads it pretty quickly on Enscape without any problems. I kind of actually expected it to have the problem in, in, in the first place with the, with the larger file as, you know, it's not like a typical file. So you do need to have a bit of more advanced computer to open very, very large files on Enscape. Uh, but generally with the small files or medium files like 800 megabytes, it actually does it very smoothly and very well. There is a very interesting 
interesting control panel in this laptop called Acer Sense, which basically allows you to control and check out a few different things such as your CPU usage, your uh, GPU usage, uh, your memory, how does your battery perform and how does your screen perform. You can access your AI camera features, you can access your AI voice features, and many, many more. You can choose to put it in different modes depending on how you're using the laptop, performance, normal, and silent. But generally, in terms of the noise, I never had an issue with the noise with this one. I had heard some comments about the noise levels of the AMD Ryzen before, but actually, I didn't experience it on this laptop uh, as I tried it. When it comes to AI, and running generative AI workflows on this laptop, I have a lot to say because I don't think this is the laptop built for it. Unless you are using the generative AI for very low end tasks, which don't require a lot of GPU power. My expertise is in Comfy UI, so I use a lot of Comfy UI on a daily basis uh, to work with my clients. I use it to create different neural networks to do specific tasks for my clients either with a text prompt or with an image prompt. We use these kind of workflows for architecture and interior design renderings for upscaling low resolution images in painting specific areas of an image for very specific purposes and also fine tuning a lot of AI models on specific data provided by their clients. In this specific workflow uh, in Comfy UI, which I want to use to test the performance, we are simply using a clay model render from Enscape uh, to render a nice textured version of the same image for client presentation. What we're doing here in this workflow is feeding the raw image to the neural network in the beginning. Then we use different methods of image processing to extract the control points from the image and use a simple text prompt to render our idea using the input image. I have disabled most of the nodes that are not necessary uh, for this workflow so I can run a simple workflow to find out how this laptop performs under AI tasks to see how much time it takes for rendering the image and bear in mind that rendering one single AI image is a very intensive task to do because the computer is basically looking at millions and millions of data in the neural network connected to different AI models and different nodes that to put different pixels next to each other to build up one single image at the end. And it's pretty intensive task for the GPU to handle it. Our image here is only 1280 to 720 to demonstrate how much it takes to render a relatively low or medium resolution image using a Ryzen 7 8000 series. To run this workflow, I need to press the Q prompt and wait for it to finish diffusing. I will cut the video here so that you don't have to wait with me to see how much the image generation takes. Okay, now that the image generation is done, you can see that the whole process took the laptop almost nine minutes to generate the image, which is quite a long time for one single image to get generated. Um, but to be honest, I did not expect anything more than that from this laptop since it's not like a high-end uh, gaming laptop which would be best to handle these type of workflows and uh, run them more efficiently in terms of time. So you either have to compromise on the image resolution to get faster generation um, and to use image upscalers and enhancers uh, online, or you have to use uh, other cloud GPUs which allow you to render things on somebody else's GPU. Now that we talked about most things and uh, did a couple of tests with the architecture workflows as well as the AI stuff, it's time for me to give my honest opinion about this laptop and the CPU and the GPU which are integrated as an APU. Um, so overall, uh, generally speaking, I like how lightweight this laptop really is. I really, really like how it handles the noise when it works in the performance mode, when you're doing multiple tasks, in terms of the performance, I actually think you can get a lot done by this laptop with the AMD Ryzen 7 8000 series. And that's what I really, really like about this laptop. Unless you're working on very, very intense graphic tasks, these are the tasks that you're not even supposed to do with medium level laptops like this one. And you should be looking for higher end laptops. However, when it comes to running AI tools locally, such as a stable diffusion, this laptop, and the processor won't be best 
if you're relying on it. So basically for my AI needs, this laptop won't be enough because it will take me ages and ages to run things. But if I were to look for a laptop that I could do my work with, I would be looking at AMD Radeon RX 7000, which comes with higher price tags as well, but would make your life much easier by being super fast with running these things. Thank you AMD for asking me to review this laptop and I hope you guys got a better idea of how the AMD Ryzen 7 8000 series work and perform, and what kind of tasks does it handle and if it is best for your usage and what you want to do with it. If you happen to have any experience with Ryzen processors and GPUs, please let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious to learn more about your experience and how you are using it. Now thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was useful and see you in the next one.